Hey everyone, welcome to another Avid tutorial. And this one is just gonna be a collection of several quick tips that are all around the general concept of organization and just finding things quickly within your project, just helping you work a little more efficiently or quickly and getting access to things in a faster way. So there's three functions within Avid I wanna talk about. That's match frame, reverse match frame, and find bin. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can organize some clips in your bin to help keep things organized. But let's start with these tools. So I'll show you where all of them are and then I'll just kind of go through what they do. So if you pull up your command palette and go to the other tab here, the three I'm gonna talk about are all in this tab. So you can see there's match frame here, reverse match frame right below it, and find bin is over here. And I have these all mapped to my keyboard. You can see I have match frames up here on the tilde key and then reverse match frame is shift tilde. So I have those set on the same button. So just regular and then there's my shift keyboard. And then find bin, I have it shift F, just F for find made sense to me. You could map them wherever you wanted. I'll be honest, I don't remember which of these might be part of the default Avid keyboard mapping. I haven't used that in so long like that I just don't remember what's customized and what is part of that. But that's where I've put them, put them wherever makes sense to you or if some of those might already be there from the default mapping. But again, they're in this other tab of the command palette, so you can find them there. Okay, so let's just go through these quickly. Like I said, all of these are things that are about just helping you find things and work more efficiently as you're going through. So match frame is, I'm in my sequence here and I wanna actually just bring up this clip. So not like this section of it that is here to edit. So this is something if you're used to say Premiere, if I double click on this clip here, it will bring it up in my source window, but it's not actually bringing up the original clip per se, it's bringing up this particular copy of it. So if I wanna do some effects or something to it, I can start doing them here and they will show up on this version, but not necessarily in other versions. What I mean here is I actually wanna find the original clip, like, hey, where did this come from? So let's just say I'm here, I'm gonna hit match frame again. For me, that's tilde, your mileage may vary. And boom, it pops right up here. And I am not playing with this original clip here. So if I go in here and like change my endpoint or outpoint or whatever, You'll notice nothing here is changing because it literally just pulled back the original clip out of my bin. You can see it was this clip right here and now it's up here. And then I could do something else then say like, yeah, actually let's edit this section of it back into the sequence here at the end. So that's what match frame is. And the other thing I'll note is that exact frame is what's gonna pop up. So even though I have this clip here, I'm gonna let's do this. I'll hit match frame again. Oops, I need to be on my timeline. If you click match frame while you're in the source window, it doesn't do anything. So I hit match frame, you'll see that same clip was up. It pulls me exactly to the frame I'm in in my timeline, and you'll see it immediately marks an endpoint there. So wherever your cursor is here, the clip will come up with an endpoint at that exact frame, just so you know. And again, it's not changing the endpoint in my sequence, it's just creating that endpoint on the original clip here. So that's match frame. I got something in my timeline. I wanna find the original clip and just bring it up into my source window. Reverse match frame is kind of the opposite. Let's say I have this timeline down here still, and I'm looking at some clip in my sequence, and I'm like, did I use this clip somewhere? And this is something that's obviously sort of stupid for a three clip sequence, but imagine you're working on a feature. A great example of this would be you're doing like a feature documentary, and you have some great B-roll clip here. You're like, oh, this is this great exterior of this building. I definitely wanna use it, but I'm working on a two hour piece. I don't remember if I already used it somewhere else. So reverse match frame could tell you, did I use that? I got this frame here. I'm going to reverse match frame again on my keyboard, that's shift tilde. And it pulled me to exactly where that frame shows up, but in my timeline. So I can see, oh yeah, that clip is here. Here's where it was. And I could then scroll through and see what was around that in the original movie. So again, match frame, I got something in my timeline. I wanna pull that original clip up into my source window and reverse match frame is the reverse. I've got something in my source window and I want to find that moment in the sequence that I'm working on. If that clip is not in your sequence, reverse match frame won't do anything. So let's just say here, I go to this frame, which I don't think is in the movie, and I'll reverse match frame, shift tilde, and it's just giving a beep at me. It's not doing anything because that frame is not in my sequence. So then that would tell me like, okay, this moment is not actually there. If I go over here, I think this part is shift tilde, boom, there we go. And that frame, it actually is in my sequence. That's your match frame and reverse match frame. Again, something that gets more useful, particularly reverse match frame on a larger project where you might not remember exactly where something was you used, but even on a small project, it can be really handy. Like, oh yeah, I know where this clip is. It's in this bin, I could go and find it. But if I just hit match frame and it immediately pulls it up here, that can be a lot quicker. Find bin is also something that generally more useful on a larger project. Let me just get another bin open here for reasons you'll see in a second. So 
Let's say I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, let's match frame this. Okay, here's that original clip, great. But maybe I wanna know where was this original clip in my project? I wanna go back and like look at it in the bin to get some information about it or see how something was organized. Maybe this was a clip I was looking for in some bin where I thought it should be and it wasn't there, but it clearly is in my project. So I'm like, okay, where the heck did I put it? Cause I've screwed up on my organization somehow. Find bin is gonna take this clip and tell me where it is and show me. So I could hit my shift F or in this case, I actually have this one mapped here. I would usually use the keyboard shortcut, but for visual purposes, I will click it here. And you'll see what it did over here. If you're paying attention, is it pulled up the bin that had that clip and highlighted that clip. So now I can see, oh, this is the bin this was in and here it is. And if this bin was closed, it will still work. This time it's not in that place I already had open. It's opening up a new one, but same thing. It found that bin and it's pulling up the clip here so I can see, oh, this is the bin where that clip was and here it is in its original place. So handy if you are looking for something and can't find it or you've screwed up your organization somehow, or again, maybe you know where this is, but you don't wanna scroll through all your bins in your project trying to find it. You're like, just pull up the bin with this because there's some other clip in there I wanna use. I'm working on a documentary currently, so that's what's in my head, but I have like some B-roll exterior and I realize, yeah, I don't really want that one. Let me see what other B-roll exteriors I have of this building. Okay, I know I have a bin for those, I can go and find it, but if I already have this bin here, I can just hit find bin and it's gonna pull that bin right up and show me that clip and I can see what other clips are in that bin too. So again, not something that's crucial or is gonna make or break your project, but something that can make things work a little more efficiently and get you where you're trying to go faster. Okay, so those were the three tools I wanted to show you. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is just something about organization that I found a lot of people either don't know or don't understand in Avid, and that has to do with duplicating clips. So I can duplicate a clip, Command D, and it'll make a copy of it. And this is now a new clip. It's still referencing that same Avid media. It still has the same metadata in terms of that. It's still referring to the same original clip that I transcoded it from. So all that is staying with it. But other things about it are different. So I could take this clip and say set a different in and out point and give it a different name. Clip to delete in a second. And you'll notice that that did not change the original clip. It didn't change the in and out point or anything like that. So I essentially have two copies of this clip that I can work with differently that just happen to reference the same media. That's fine, that can sometimes be useful. I use duplicate all the time for sequences. You know, I finish working on something for the day and I'm coming in the next day, like let me duplicate yesterday's sequence and start working because that way if I completely screw up my edit and go down a very bad rabbit hole and nothing is working, I can get back to where I was yesterday. So duplicating sequences I use all the time. Duplicating clips I don't use a ton. What I do like to do is have multiple copies of a clip floating around sometimes. So in this case, I have just this empty extra bin here, cleverly labeled extra bin. So I could take this and move it in here and now that clip is in there instead of in here and I can move it back here. And you're familiar with that. What you may not know is the other thing I could do is I can hold down option and move this in here. And now I have that clip in both bins. So here's this one, here's this one. And it's now in two different bins, but this is not a duplicate. This is still the same clip. If I change the name of this, let's just add something at the end. Not duplicating. You'll notice up here, it changed the name of this as well, because now we are literally just have two copies of the same clip, the same clip with the same metadata name in and out, everything else is just floating around in multiple places. That is different from duplicate. Wanted to point that out. But the other question you might have is, well, why is this useful? Very small project. If I only have like 10 clips, it's not, there's not really any purpose to doing this, but the larger your projects get, the more important it is to be organized and be able to find things where you need them. So this is something I use a lot on large projects, whether it's fiction or documentary, but particularly for documentary, which is again, what I'm working on right now, I find this handy because it allows me to sort of categorize things multiple ways in terms of what bins things are located in. I often have on a large project, bins organized by what date did I shoot this on? And also what drive is this on? If this is a project that spanned multiple drives where I have a ton of footage, where's the original footage? What drive did it come from? And I wanna organize things that way. Then I also wanna organize things by what they're about. And using this feature, again, holding down option when I'm dragging it, and that just makes another place that's referencing the same clip. So I don't even wanna call it a copy of the clip. It's showing me the same clip in multiple places. So now I can take this same clip, which makes it easier for me to find what I'm looking for by having it in multiple places so it can kind of be labeled and organized in different ways. So example, the documentary I'm working on right now is about a comedy club opening, and I have some footage of the crowd watching the show on opening night. So again, I have that in one bin that's organized by the date it was shot, another bin where it's organized by what hard drive that original master footage is on, 
And then I have it in a bin that's labeled crowd shots because sometimes you just want a B-roll crowd shot of people watching the comedy. But then I also have it in another bin that's labeled opening night because this is one that was specific to opening night and maybe I have some footage of people coming in and want to show those same people in the crowd that night. So I want to make sure that those are connected there. Some of those crowd shots have family and friends of the club's owner who's in the documentary. So I might have those also organized with B-roll of his family. And anytime I need a shot of his family and I want to show them at the club, I can go there. And again, it's the same clip in all those places. So if I rename it or if at some point I need to re-import it at a different resolution or something, I can do that once and it's percolating through all these different places because they're all referencing that same media. They're all keeping all the same information on it. So that's just an organizational tip. Again, definitely overkill for a tiny project. But the bigger your projects get, that's something that can be really handy. At the very least, you might want to organize something, let's say it's fiction piece by what day did we shoot it, what drives it on, and what scene is it for. And you could have that same clip in three different places that way. And again, anything you change on one of them will affect all of them. If you don't want that, then use the command D duplicate function. And then when you change something on one of them, it's not affecting the other ones, although they're all still referencing the same media. That's the tutorial for today. Hope that gives you some tips on just efficiency and working through things a little smoother and finding things more quickly and that that's useful. I will see you next time.